So the half-life, by definition, is the, the uh, time required for the level of radioactivity to fall to one-half of its value. In the examples that we just saw, we saw a half-life of 50 seconds and a half-life of 100 seconds. Um, in both cases, the, the uh, graph looked like this, which is what we call first-order uh, rate kinetics, but the time scale was different. And in this particular example of plutonium-239, the half-life is the amount of time it takes for, they're saying you know, this is 100% of the original sample, the time it takes to fall to half the original amount um, right here, if you go down, is 24,000 years, 24,110 years. So that means if you start with, a, say, 100 atoms, in 24,110 years, you'll end up with 50 atoms. And then the next um, half-life would be another 24,110 years. That would get you up to 48,220 years before you have, again, half remaining. So one-half times one-half is one-fourth. And then half of that, again, would be one-half times uh, uh, one-fourth would be one-eighth remaining, um, about 12.5% all the way out at 72,000 years. So you can see that the curve looks the same, but the time scale is different, and the uh, rates are given in um, most widely expressed in terms of half-lives. So half-life, the time required for the level of radioactivity to fall to one half of its value. And so here's just some different isotopes so you can get a feel for the, the wide variety of half-lives. So for example, uranium-238, the one that's found in the soil, the half-life is 4.5 times 10 to the ninth years. Okay, that's 4.5 billion years for half of the original sample to decay. Potassium-40, 1.3 times 10 to the ninth years. That's why we have um, radioactive pota potassium isotopes still mixed in with, um, you know, a regular sample of potassium. Whereas um, polonium-214 has a half-life of only 0 0.000016 seconds. So that doesn't stay around for very long. So this is how we could explain, even though we have in nature um, radioactive isotopes, we know they're undergoing spontaneous radioactive decay. If that's the case, you may ask yourself, why do we have any of those isotopes remaining? The reason why is because the decay rate, in some cases, is very, very slow. Okay? And in some cases, it's very, very fast.